Hi everybody, Electronic Tonic here, and I've been fixing things for a very, very long time. And in my experience, I found that the most common uh, failure is due to an electrical connection gone bad, either inside a connector or a switch, or perhaps a bad solder joint, or maybe even a touchy wire inside the insulation. We know we've all experienced something like that with, with power uh, adapters, the wires from power adapters, or headphone jacks. And today, I've got something that is no exception to this faulty connection rule, and that is a base. This is the base of a Celestron Ultima C11 telescope. It has an 11-inch mirror and it's my dad's telescope. He uses it to do his astronomy. And over the past few weeks, the clock drive has gone bad. The clock drive is just, it's inside the base of the scope. There's this, there's the motor in here that, that um, makes the, uh, the telescope go around. The telescope goes on here and rotates this way for the, the, uh, the right ascension. That's what that motor controls. And then there's a circuit board right here. And it can be powered by a 9-volt battery for 35 hours of continuous operation or a 12-volt power adapter. But anyway, you know, it's got these, all these fancy electronics here and buttons and LEDs and stuff. And I don't know what I just did there, but let me turn that off. Anyway, the problem is that if I remove the, the motor entirely, then that LED is blinking. And that was the problem initially, whether the motor was connected or not, that LED was blinking. That's the, the LED indicating the, the rate. It has four different rates of rotation here, either if you're looking at the stars or if you're looking at the moon or the sun, they all appear to move through the sky at different rates. And then there's this king rate, uh, which, is, which takes into account the atmospheric refraction um, if you're looking at the stars. But anyway, blinking LED basically means no good. And um, on the motor side, we got a, just a straight up DC brush motor and inside that little black cylinder is the optical encoder. Then there's a gearbox and that spins the worm gear which goes on a much larger gear all the way around here for the base of the scope. And again, this connector was inside the back of it here and not working at all. So. I was prepared. I printed out all this stuff about the portion of the telescope manual about the drive here and everything about that. And I found some information online about a different clock drive circuit board with some oscilloscope um, waveforms there so I could compare it to this one. And I printed out data sheets for the three different ICs on this circuit board, including a portion of the data sheet for the, the PIC-16 that controls the whole thing. But apparently that wasn't necessary. So let me get back to my point here about faulty connections. Apparently the only problem was this, this connection right here. This just a basic, it's a 6P-6C um, phone type connector. Let me see if I can yank this out. So that's all it is. And basically what I did was I flipped it around. This, this one was in, initially in here. Um, so then I flipped it around and put it in there instead or whatever. I mean, basically I just take out the connector and jam it in there back and forth a couple times to clean the contacts. And I didn't put any contact cleaner in here yet, but I certainly will just to make sure that the contacts are clean both on this one and also inside here. 
and might as well do it inside here too. And I guess it's no surprise that it's dirty. If you can see the inside of the the base here, there's all this gunky oil, greasy stuff all around that's accumulated from the and there's this green grease here too. Everything's very well greased up inside. So I'm going to spray some contact cleaner in there and in this one too and put the put this connector back in place and then I mean it already has been working since I played around with the connector but I'm just going to make sure it stays working. Oops, look what I did. I, uh, I thought I was spraying in contact cleaner, but it turned out to be flux remover. So I guess I'm gonna have to try that again. Here's my contact cleaner. Okay, well it seems like something's still wrong here because the LED is still flashing and the motor and here it's spinning a little faster than it should be. Oh, now it just suddenly slowed down. I'm not sure if it's programmed to do that or let me turn it off. And turn it back on. Seems to be fine now. And it started, it slowed down before I even touched anything here. If I plug it in when it's turned on, then the motor spins up fast at first, and then it slows down because, again, because the optical encoder in here feeds back the motor speed back into the circuit. So it makes sure it goes at the correct rate. Let me see what happens if I leave this disconnected for a period of time. Okay, that should be enough. I'm going to put the mic here by the motor and plug it in. And it's not moving. Oh, duh. That's the wrong connector. Put it in back here. So you can hear it's going pretty fast. And it's blinking, but I'm hoping that it will stop very soon or it will slow down. There it goes, it did slow down all by itself. So I guess it's just supposed to do that according to the program, whatever is on the pick, it does that automatically. And if I shut it off, everything's working fine. So there's a perfect example of why it's always good to check your connections first. Anything that, any connector or wire that could potentially be busted, I knew that the problem had to be Either the the motor driver, which is something on this board, I don't even what I don't even know what exactly drives the motor. Probably just this single little transistor right here, gets probably gets pulse width modulated. But I figured it was either the the motor driver or the motor itself. You know, maybe the uh, the brushes had gone bad on the commutator inside the motor. It might have been a problem with the rotary encoder. Might have been. I wasn't really. I thought maybe there was probably a blockage inside one of the gears might have been bad, but if I just hooked up straight DC to the motor, that was working fine. So could have also been uh, the feedback loop from the encoder back to the, uh, the controller board, and apparently that's what it was. It was just a bad connection somewhere here, either to the motor or either to the motor or from the encoder one of those connections was bad and that's why the motor wasn't spinning and this thing was blinking but now that everything's fine got the contacts clean 
I didn't have to reverse engineer this board at all. Everything works beautifully now. So I can put this all back together and my dad can put it back on his scope and continue his astronomical observations. See you later. Thanks for watching and give it a thumbs up.